This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. We got Goldilocks welcoming in Bill Moody, uh, the former Paul Bearer, Percy Pringle. And uh, we're going to, as we like to say here on the show, track it. I, I got to say, as being uh, the new girl on the block, new kid, I try to do a little research and nose around and just learn as much as I can about the people in our company. And I got to say, it's, it's incredible to just to find out what a pioneer you are in this business. And you are a, a very respected man with the exception of a few weeks ago with Vince Russo. When, when you were so clearly looking for something from him, seeking him out, how did it... How did it make you feel to be publicly humiliated in the ring? Well, first of all, the first week of April, I'm going to be standing in Las Vegas, Nevada, up on the podium at the Cauliflower Alley Club. And if you don't know what the Cauliflower Alley Club, that's the premier club of talent in our industry. It's composed of all the heroes from the past, present, and future. This year, they are honoring me at their convention. And I'm gonna stand up there proud as hell and accept that plaque because I sure have worked my behind for it. Unlike somebody else named Vincent Russo. Vince Russo, just that name makes my stomach Sour. Vince Russo, you will never know what it feels like to stand at the Cauliflower Alley Club in front of those people, in front of those legends, and be honored. You'll never know that. You, I've had the best of both worlds. I've certainly had the best of sports entertainment. I've had the best of the traditional style. But you know, Two weeks ago, when I was leaning across those stairs right there, my life's blood was pouring out of my head. Why did you want me to track all this? I don't know. That's where I'm coming out, isn't it? Eventually? Yeah. Well, I keep tracking it then. He's one of those vultures in that SEX group. Here you come. I'm not running, Russo. You'll never know what Percy Pringle III will do next, who he'll do it with, or where he'll do it. But I promise you, my reputation speaks for itself, and I'm not going anywhere. Who's this? Tony Tony Schiavone. Oh, man. Well, well, I told you, my former broadcast partner, Tony Schiavone. Tony Schiavone, how you doing? Good. I, you know, you've been in the business a long time. Our paths have never crossed. I used to watch you in world-class championship wrestling. Enjoyed you in the WWF with The Undertaker. You really, I've, I've really admired your career. But, but, but I, I do want to say something that two weeks ago I was watching this program. And you know when you were talking to Vince Russo? I have never in my life seen someone kiss someone's ass the way you kissed Vince Russo to try to get in this business. Go ahead, keep talking. I will keep talking. Let me tell you this, this is one man's opinion, okay? I would have never stooped that low. All right, here, stand next to me. I need to look thin, okay? I would have never stooped that low. It was pathetic, but it's just one man's opinion. Okay, that's just my opinion, but I do want to talk about something, if I can. As you probably know, I've been out of the the business for almost two years, and I've been wondering exactly why I've not had a job in pro wrestling for two years. Is your name Goldilocks? As in, who's been sleeping in my bed? That's right. You do the interviews around here. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. So let me do an interview with you. Okay. How long have you been in pro wrestling? Five minutes. Okay. 
Why are you here with NWA? Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Goldie. An ass. Now this wasn't what I expected. That's the reality of our business. I thought he was answering. And hey, I don't care. I don't mind. I understand when Vince Russo talks about extreme S E X. I understand that. But here's the deal. You know, you you make Pamela Paul Shock look like Diane Sawyer. Do you realize that? And I do understand. But what I can't understand, and what I think, at a blonde bimbo like you should be holding something instead of this. Tony, that's enough. And I think you know what I mean, right? Tony! Tony, that's but enough. I... You've gone over the line, Tony. Well, Mike, come on in the ring here. Come on in the ring. We haven't talked in a long time. Come on. Come on. As most of you probably know, I was responsible for driving Mike Tanay around at each and every show during the days of WCW. So Mike, it's been a long time since we talked, so I'd like to talk to you face to face. I called you because I have a couple of things I wanted to say. First of all, how's the family? How's Karen, okay? Family's doing just fine. Good. Mike, when the NWA TNA first formed, I thought to myself, this will be a perfect opportunity for me to get back into pro wrestling. You know why, Mike? Tell me. Okay, I'll tell you why. In 1983, when I was interviewing Harley Race, what were you doing? Selling air conditioning equipment in LA? That was working in Las Vegas, but get to your oh, point. You're working What's in the Las story? Vegas. Not only that, I was there with the Rock and Roll Express. I was there when Magnum TA had his car wreck. I was there with the Four Horsemen. I was doing the Great American Bash while you were writing dirt sheets in Las Vegas. You understand? And your what? point? My point is that I tried to get in the door here, and you know what I was told? Well, first of all, Jeff Darrett never returned my call. You know what I was told? Tanay doesn't want to work with you. Tanay thinks you held him down during the years at WCW. Is that the deal, Mike? Yeah, you I'm think sure, I held Tony. You down? I held you down? That's hardly the case. If anything, I went out of my way each and every week to make your job easier, and you know that. Oh, yeah, you did a great job of that. You did an absolute great job of that. But I want to talk reality, Mike. I want to talk reality. I heard you out here talking to Vince Russo about how Vince Russo had you sitting at home. You know what I say to that, Mike? Bullshit! That's what I say to that. No, you, how many kids you get in? It's a fact. That's yeah. exactly what it was. You're always... Vince Russo cost me my job, and he cost you your job, and he cost hundreds of other people their job with WCW, and that's a fact. Baloney. He jumped on the Titanic before it hit the iceberg. It was going down anyway. You know it, and I know it. What is keeping pro wrestling down is people like you. And let me tell and you why. why is that? Let me tell you why. If you would have been around in the 1950s, would you have liked Gorgeous George? Hell no, you wouldn't have liked it. You'd have kept him down. What about Andy Kaufman? And Hardly the case. What about Andy Kaufman and the deal in the 70s with him? Would you have gone for that? No, because it wouldn't meet up to your standards. You would have buried Hulkamania. You would have buried the NWA. You would have buried the NWO. You would have done all that, Mike, because Vince Russo doesn't book doesn't like things the right. way you, you like it. Vince Russo doesn't belong in wrestling. You think Tony. I'm against progress in Tony. wrestling? That's not the case at all. Tony! You wanna, you wanna talk some facts? Tony! Let's talk some facts. I'm not They're shut. trying to cut Tony. me off. Don't cut me off. Let's talk facts. Oh, Let's that's talk all you facts. Guys. Let's facts. talk facts. Let's talk 1999. Let's talk facts. This man has bullshit between his ears, Tony. He does not listen to one word you say. And he represents tradition. This is what it's all about. People like him who only give a shit about themselves, Tony. He doesn't care about you or your kids or you, the best announcer in this business, not working for two years. So what I say is Mike Tanay, Tony Schiavone does not need you because, Tony, behind that door, there is a family. We care about each other. 
We don't stab each other in the back like the todays of the business. You want a home? You've got a job, Tony. You've got a job right beyond that door, and we're waiting for you with open arms. You and Russo? I guess I shouldn't be surprised, Tony. Remember your motto all those years? Yeah, when we drove down the road. Remember your motto? Any way the wind blows. In other words, who's ever in charge, you're gonna kiss their butt. You know what, Tony? That's a perfect association for you with Russo. Remember the word family, Mike. Remember the word family. You understand? Two kids going to college, sitting on the sidelines, and Vince Russo put me on a job. You're bullshit. You've always been bullshit, and I want to tell you this right now. Down in Atlanta, Georgia, is a guy named Scott Hudson who could do your job any day, and he wouldn't even charge him the airfare to go to Las Vegas. <laughs> you know what, Tony? When it came to job security in all those years with WCW, you were all about politics. You were never about performance. So there you go. Tony Schiavone's sole TNA appearance. The only time we ever saw Tony as a heel. Tony, you just watched it back for the first time in over 17 years. I guess you've never really seen it all the way through at all. No. But now you have. What'd you think? I hated it. Meltzer, I'm sorry, not Meltzer. Alvarez would say some people like Shivani playing the heel announcer, but the live crowd was dead for the segment where he and Tanae argued forever. The gist of the weird shoot angle, which was planned ahead of time to a degree, is Shivani was supposed to mock Tanae. By saying if people like him ran the business, that gorgeous George Hulkamania and Andy Kaufman would have never been in wrestling. There's a lot of other lines, but Shivani ended up forgetting his lines on TV. The nice comeback was cut short by Russo coming out early and trying to grab the mic from him, which was not scripted and try to baby face himself by saying he was the one to save wrestling for everyone's kids because it'll die without him. Others were mad because they expected tonight to sell longer for Shivani. And when he didn't, Russo came out. Although Shivani was planned for a long-term role as a heel announcer, that is now in question. As he left the building before or after the taping, he was telling people he wouldn't be back. He drove back to Atlanta after the show with Raven, Sanders, Russo, and maybe Gilberti. And Shivani told him that he felt terrible playing a heel and wanted no part of it. They were trying to pump him up and say he did well, but it didn't change his tune for the rest of the trip. A few days later, in Jeremy Borash's TNA report, he as much as said the same thing. So chat us up. What the fuck? Okay. I, I didn't, I, I didn't mind playing the heel to be honest with you. Uh, I can just tell you that my feeling at that time was, uh, I didn't mind the reason again, the, the real reason that I didn't want to come back is I just didn't want to do wrestling again. I didn't, I I had had enough of it and, uh, I wanted to, Wanted to go another direction. What did you had enough of the politics, the travel, the fans, the creative, the writing I process, the matches? What, why, why wasn't a good fit? What changed? Wow. Kid cash coming out. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know what it was. May I it just Conrad. The only thing I can say is, and uh, there's very little about this. I remember, I, I think if I'm right, it may have never aired. But I did an interview in the back afterwards. Yeah, that, we're going to see that in a moment. I okay, think. good. All right. And I felt pretty good about that. Uh, but the only thing I can remember, and I remember this distinctly, vividly, was watching and listening to what was going on. I, I was just turned off by the business. I was turned off by it. I, I And maybe it was because that there was two years and – you know, Vince never called me and, and maybe it was because I thought in my mind that, wow, you know, now I'm right. We're talking 2003. I'm on uh, the Atlanta Braves pregame and postgame show. And I'm doing that and I'm, I'm getting to go to Braves games and I'm, I'm getting to work with the Georgia Bulldogs now. And I'm, I'm really lo- loving what I'm doing. And I just didn't want it anymore. So. That's why it's not because I felt bad about being a heel, not at all, but I do know they, we talked about it on the way back and I told Vince and I, then I, 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 when I, sh- I remember shutting the door of the van, I say, uh, Vince said, come on, just get, come out one more time and see what you think. Just give it one more shot. And I said, I, I don't think so, Vince, I, I'll call you. And I called him and told him I, I can't do it. And I appreciate it. Vince was always good to me, man. I mean, 
there was a he had something in Chattanooga years later where he was going to bring me out and was going to um, he said he said you know you've been screwed over by the business and I want to uh, have a night for you and so come on out and we'll do something for you that night and my boss I told my boss and my boss at that time I can't remember what time the year that year was my boss said listen stay away from wrestling. I said, okay. And so I called Vince. I said, I'm, I can't do it. I can't come out. So Lois told you to stay away from wrestling. No, my boss. And you, you said, and, ball, yeah, you said that Lois yeah. told you to so, wait, wait, who was your boss? If Lois wasn't your boss, it was a guy named Pete Spriggs who since retired from Cox media. Yeah. Well, he's a good man. He's a cock. Fuck him. No, he's not good. Well, well, we, he was a good man. No, he wasn't. Okay. We needed you to be a part of our wrestling shit. And he. It took you away from us, so fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> what? That, that, look, the timing couldn't have been better, Conrad. Really, you think about it. The, the timing could have couldn't have been better. I stayed out long enough to where, with the exception of a handful of real dickheads, out long enough to where people didn't really remember how bad I was at the end. Well, no, it wasn't necessarily you, you were, you were given an impossible task. So anyway, and so time nostalgia got, you know, kids who are watching it, your age, who were younger back then watching it, big into nostalgia, remembers that part of their child. It, it's in all of us, man. Something that clicks in our childhood really draws us to it. I, I feel the same way when I watch vintage games on on YouTube, vintage baseball or, or football games reminds me of my childhood. So now everybody grows up. You're part of this group grows up nostalgia. I'm part of the past. And all of a sudden now I'm welcome back with open arms. It, it wasn't that easy. I don't want to mean to say it was easy. It took some time and it took some effort for a lot of effort from you to make it work. But it, I just think timing, the timing was right. And, um, uh, I didn't think it at first, but yeah, the timing is right. And it's much better. The timing was much better. If I would have, okay, let me, let me ask these, <clears throat> who are these two girls? Let me just and say I'll this. If you were, if you would have went back with TNA, I mean, if you would have mm-hmm. got back in the business here with TNA, mm-hmm. you would have had to wreck your own car. You wouldn't have been able to wreck Tony's <laughs> rental from Avis, you know? And yeah, I had a feeling you'd say you, something let me fucking just tell stupid you, like that. They wouldn't you have had a fucking platinum stooge ass Fleer family. Whoa, okay? whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Stooge ass Fleer family. Let me just okay? tell you, son. And you know what? Right? You know what? I hope during Thanksgiving, when you all get together, that pop pop shows his dick to the grandchildren. How's that sound? Well, that's not going to happen. Okay. So anyway, uh, Stooge fucking family. Okay. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.